Greetings and namaskar to each one who came here to watch this video. We had gone through the Gauss law in previous video and today we are going to take the topic scalar potential. Scalar potential basically describes the situation where difference in potential energy of an object at two different points depends only on their positions but not on the path. So let's consider general case for Coulomb's law of volume charge and we know that we take rho for the volume charge and d tau is the volume element and here we will take two coordinates that are prime coordinates x dash y dash z dash and unprimed coordinates x y and z. Now let's write electric field at point R. As you know that we are dealing with volume charge, thus we had taken rho, d tau dash and tau dash as prime coordinates. Another thing that is the gradient of 1 upon r is, here you can see that r cap upon r square, we have the same value of the gradient of 1 upon r so we can replace it. So replacing it and rewriting it, we will get. So here we had replaced r cap upon r square by del 1 upon r and this minus sign over here in front. Alright. So here integration is over prime coordinates that is x dash y dash z dash whereas this gradient operator involves unprime coordinates as x y and z. So we can take this gradient operator out of this integration sign and we will get it as here this value in the bracket is v so we can write it as where this v is here we had changed this volume charge element into dq and this v is known as electrostatic potential or scalar potential now integrating it we will get the potential due to the point charge q that is so after integration we will get 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught q by r and if we will talk for collection of charges then we will write potential as so we get this in a summation form where i is from 1 to n and this potential is for collection of charges therefore potential obeys the principle of superposition so this is potential in superposition form and if you remember we use lambda for line charge distribution right and sigma for surface charge distribution. So this potential is for line charge distribution and this potential is for surface charge distribution. Here we used lambda for line charge distribution and sigma for surface charge distribution. Here dl dash is line element and ds dash is surface element and the values of the e that is e is equals to minus del v so the value of e can be written in three coordinates as so these are the values of the e in different coordinates cartesian spherical and cylindrical so these value will help you in solving the numericals so now we can see from this equation that is E equals to minus del V that electric field E is a vector quantity and the potential V is a scalar quantity and from here we get the answer of one question that is why do we use a scalar potential? This is because it is easy to solve the scalars rather than the vectors. So, the electric field can be derived from the scalar function v by the gradient operation so it is easy to deal with the function v. Now moving further, let's take curl both sides of this equation. So we had taken curl both sides here and here. And since the product of the curl and gradient is 0, therefore 
del cross E is equals to 0. And by Stokes theorem, so this is a Stokes theorem and this expression holds for an arbitrary open area S enclosing the curve C. As del cross E is equals to 0, so it means this term is 0, hence E dot dl is also equals to 0. So from these equation A and B, we can say that E dot dl would vanish over any closed path, hence del cross E is equals to 0, that is E dot dl is also 0 and this del cross E is equals to 0 means conservative field or a rotational field and line integral of electric field is independent of the path. So it does not depend upon the path, it is directionless value, hence depends only on its location. Now if we will talk about potential difference between two points then we will get it by dv is equals to del v dot dl. Here we replace del v by minus e from this equation. And now integrating both sides with the limits initial to final. We can write it as this. And now we can take initial point as reference point and final point as the observation point. And then our equation will become here REF is for reference point and R is for observation point. So from initial to final that is reference point to the observation point. And here the choice of reference point is arbitrary. Generally V reference is taken as 0 at the reference point for the convenience. Therefore we can write it as V is equals to so at last we get V is equals to minus integration R reference point to the observation point R E dot DL and the case where the reference point can be taken as infinite. So that would be possible when electric field would get vanished. So at infinite distance electric field vanish. So in that case it is convenient to take reference point as the infinite. And then the equation will become this. We know that electric field is the force on the unit test charge. Therefore, from this equation, we can say that electrostatic potential at a point as the work done in bringing a unit positive test charge from infinite to that observation point without changing the kinetic energy of this unit test charge. So that's it under the scalar potential. We use the scalar potential V because it is easy to solve the scalar quantities than the vector quantities. So that's it by my side. Hope you found this video productive. Thanks for giving your time here. Take care.